Well, greetings, everyone. Yes. Thanks an absolute joy to be here. Thank you. So much gratitude for the invitation. Um, my name is Dr. Nia Nunn, and I'll pass the and mic. And I'm Anne-Marie Zwack. Yes, so we are above and beyond excited to be in this space. And I want to honor the moment that you all just had. Um, I am an Ithacan, born and raised in Ithaca, and I do cartwheels over the fact that our college students stay in town, especially we fall in love with them. We're like, don't go, right? Like, you help us build. That's what this is about, the town gown collaborative transformation. In fact, my parents went to Ithaca College, so they wouldn't stay and be townies, but lo and behold, that's exactly what they did. Um, so I, I honor you as well. Um, thank you for, for this invitation. Again, my name is Dr. Nia Nunn. I'm an associate professor at Ithaca College in the Department of Education. So I have the glorious responsibility of preparing teachers. But in addition to that, as I tell many people, I wear multiple head reps in the community. Um, and serve as a board chair of Southside Community Center. And some of the history and essence of, of this building and even uh, the energy that goes into uh, protecting and preserving this space, as I've learned, um, feels a lot like what we experience in Ithaca um, with Southside Community Center, uh, where I was a little girl. Um, and that's very much connected to, to this work. Um, that we'll be sharing with you today. Um, I'm a mother of three boys. We are 11, 14, and 17, right? So they keep me up and moving, moving and grooving, right? And then I take my, you know, my little breaks and indulge and hang out with my girls and then bring them all together. Um, so, so yes, this has just been incredible to partner with Anne-Marie for, for these years and many, many women um, who have contributed to, to this work. Um, so again, we are truly grateful to be here. And you can introduce yourself, Anne-Marie. So I'm Anne-Marie Zwack, and I'm a visual artist, and I specialize in engaging communities in creating public art, mm -hmm. um, in creating and designing and self-determinative work mm -hmm. where people are making work in the spaces where they live and play and work that reflects themselves mm -hmm. and the culture of the specific place. Um, so I have had the great pleasure of working with Dr. Nia since 2018. That's right. We started um, That's right. on the first project at Southside. Yes. And we're still working together. We're about to unveil this year another mosaic and you'll get to see pictures of the process mm -hmm. yes yes and I, I think it's it's important and I know that you'd appreciate this folks who are from Elmira who honor the history of Elmira um, we have that that energy um, coming out of Southside Community Center in fact we're almost a hundred years old so Southside was incorporated in 1934 by a group of black women. They were called the Francis Harper Women's Club. When I was a little girl, I used to think that Francis Harper was one of them, but I found out that she was a writer in the 1800s, and they were honoring her poetry and all this other stuff. And for me, we, we're doing cartwheels over poetry today, and so it's really like recognizing this, this history. Um, as a little girl, I was raised and learning that I was growing up in a space of greatness, right? A space of greatness. So just a little quick story to give you a sense for the, the location. Um, so in the 1920s in Ithaca, the Ku Klux Klan was quite strong, right? And in fact, there was a large gathering over at this glorious space where we buy our food. It's called Wegmans. <laughs> but right on the grounds of Wegmans, this huge clan gathering, horses, the whole get up, the whole outfit, right? And I teach showing this image because in the image there's this little boy, this little white boy just learning, right? And so we talk about the dynamics of unpacking his exposure, what's being taught, and recognizing the reality that these messages are still being taught, right? But the Francis Harper women went around the community to make sure that children were safe, that families had a plan. And as part of that, they discovered some of the needs of community members. And longer story shorter, they created the Southside House, which eventually became the Southside Community Center, a building that erected with the uh, PWA, the, what's it, what's that called? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and in fact, in 1938, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt came to visit 
and honor the work that these women had done, their new leader, Dr. James L. Gibbs. And she visited Ithaca February 1938. Check this out. I found out a few years ago that in May 1938, at the White House, Eleanor Roosevelt had straight up a black girl magic tea party. There were 75 little black girls from the community who were invited, they were from various houses, but some orphanages and, you know, and she gathered these young girls, tea, cake, exposure to the White House. And Eleanor Roosevelt got a whole bunch of pushback. You can imagine, there's a picture of her handing a little girl cake, holding someone's hand, connecting, humanizing black girlhood in 1938. I tell that story because I like to think she got the idea from Southside. And if, I'm just like, I went through that whole thing to simply tell you that, all right? To give you a sense for <laughs> what we're sharing. So again, um, it, it's just an honor to share this, this story. So um, Nidia Blass, she was an executive director at Southside Community Center and I was serving on the board. Uh, we wrote a grant, we wrote a grant telling the story of growing up in Ithaca both black and girl. And growing up in a predominantly white space, navigating this college town, navigating some of the ways in which Ithaca serves as a microcosm for the, the larger society, we told our stories. And as part of that, we received a grant for $270,000 for three years. And our conversation and introduction was this concept of black girl alchemists. We say, what if? What if we could not only present a program, but a philosophy, an idea of black girls and black women being able to define ourselves, right? And recognize the ways in which we respond to the ways in which other folks define us, but interrupting that with self-determination and through art in a variety of ways. And so that's just to give you some of the heartbeat of this concept. Um, I teach black feminist thought, uh, black feminist alchemy. I teach courses in the realm of this conversation for several years. And Nidia Blass is a photographer. She's an artist as well. She has a piece called The Girls Who Spun Gold. So we were able to just not only share our story, our history, but our, our crafts. And as part of that, we were introduced to this fantastic woman, Anne Marie. And as part of it, we're gonna share some photos of our journey together. And you'll actually be able to listen to some of the voices of our girls and what black girl alchemists, what it means to be a black girl alchemist. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Maybe next slide? Sure, yes, yes, do that. This is a little bit of what you were saying um, about you and Nidia mm -hmm. Blas. Um, and Nidia is an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. She's, her work is um, international. Mm -hmm. Oh, is my microphone there? Um, let's move to the next slide. Yes. She's currently an a, a assistant professor at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. This is my friend Jasmine. Jasmine is an eighth grader. Um, at Boynton Middle School. I don't care, I love myself. And walk around with pride mm -hmm. is like having my head up high and loving what I do mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's t we're talking about like people from the past, like Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, Mama Scott, mm -hmm. Dr. Dorothy Cotton, mm -hmm. and we read a lot of books based on African Americans or, mm -hmm. yeah, stuff like that. It feels good because we're teaching other people that are not mm -hmm. of ours so-called 
Mm -hmm. And they listen to us mm -hmm. and they sing with us, <laughs> dance with us, mm -hmm. laugh with us. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. are reflecting on their own relationship with blackness yeah. too, right? All of us, yeah. I guess you could show it too. Like, you could show you're happy to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And like if you see someone down or something like saying something about their skin mm -hmm. or something like that you could talk to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just spread it mm -hmm. and you, communicate with yeah. other people you're a healer yeah. you, you, realize, you say yeah you realize that right you straight up you're a healer that's beautiful and you help other people out that's right Excellent, world changing. Talk about Mama Scott. What do you remember about Mama Scott? I got pictures of you real little with her. <laughs> the first time I, rem I met Mama Scott was we were actually in Southside and we were upstairs. We were upstairs in the middle of upstairs and she came in and I showed her the door that was painted of her. She was so surprised, mm -hmm. so lovely, so that. nice. Yeah. And then she read a book to us. That's right. Do you remember what the book was? I don't actually. I think. Uh, I am enough. Yeah. Yeah. I am that was enough. That my favorite page. Like, like the sun, I'm here to shine. And <laughs> sometimes, I don't, personally, I don't like reading, but when she read it to us, mm. it, I liked it. I like became more interested in mm. it and the way she was talking to us and then hopping off the book uh -huh. and then getting back into the book. Yeah. And she was talking about talk, you know, talking to us about how she used to teach mm -hmm. and read to other people. Right. And be a leader. That's right. She mama Scott had a way of having everybody fall in love with reading. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Where I'm from, I am from Bobos and Barrettes. I am from block parties and love. I am from Caribbean food. I am from bakes and sawfish. I am from rhythm and beats. I am from dance. I am from SNS Hardware. I am from a huge family tree. I am from talent and leadership. I am from sweat and hard work. I am from funny and caring. I am from playing in the park and having fun. I am from Double Dutch. I am from TikTok. I am from riding a bike. I am from. Jasmine finishing up her, her poem. There are several poems. Um, we won't watch all of them, but actually, I invite you to go to the YouTube and look up Kamep um, Kwanzaa Day 2, and you can watch the whole thing. Um, there are several of our girls that did their poems, and then my college women. So there are a bunch of black college women that they did their poems as well um, and shared and created videos. But I know we're going to watch Nasaya. I am from Carnival. I am from yes. Brooklyn. That's how I meet. Okay. So just, I oh, and this is, yeah, precious. And just precious. to listen to one of our, our this is an, an older. We just um, express ourselves in our, this comfortable in our blackness and being black and women and learning how powerful we can be, yes. even though sometimes. I don't know, sometimes you, I always feel like ashamed of it mm. in some ways, but I feel like with Black Girl Alchemist, we just are like completely ourselves mm. with no, with no restraints or feel, feel like being judged or being the stereotypical like Black girl. Mm. With that, you're just you and I don't know, it's cool. We're finishing another glorious black girl alchemist, Mosaic Mural, like the one we created together on the front of the Southside Community Center. 
This smaller project will eventually be on the front of the downtown Ithaca Children's Center. Celebrating the life of Dejour Gandhi, a beloved DICC teacher and cherished son, cousin, and born and raised member of the Ithaca community, the BGA and Downtown Ithaca Children's Center Mosaic will present black girls' illustrations and expressions of black joy, all of which Dejour embodied. Like far too many black murders, Dejour's tragic loss was followed by mistreatment and complete disregard for his life, dehumanizing responses to his death by local police, medical personnel, and media, systematically devaluing his life. The BGA experience is about deeply reflective representation and reclaiming narratives that honor black bodies, black lives, and black joy. So in the rap, I say, uh -huh. I say, I got black joy from my head to my toes. And it means, mm -hmm. no. Thank you all. <laughs> Definitely, we encourage you to uh, check out some of the other parts, some of the other poems, some of the other opportunities that we <laughs> emphasize for our young people to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I would mention um, COMEP is an acronym. Yes. It stands for Community, Community Unity, Unity Music, Music Education Program. So that's a performing arts program that I have been running out of Southside for many, many years, but my father created it in 2002. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we're celebrating, yes, yes. And so if you're looking for those Kwanzaa videos, you need to look for COMEP yeah. on mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I can share, we can share the information with you to make sure that folks have access. Um, but yes, yes, and this is about sharing a, a, a model to, to share. We know that there are multiple models um, in the world. We were talking about that in the car too, just the, the glorious framework that, that, that can be um, acknowledged. For example, honoring Mama Scott, right? Jacqueline Elizabeth Melton Scott. This woman, we all have our stories about the role that she played in our lives as children, as adults. And so, you know, coming to Elmira, you know, who is the Mama Scott in Elmira? We know she's here. We know she's here. Who's the Diane Sams? Who's the, the Beverly J. Martin, the Dr. Dorothy Cotton? We know they're here. And so encouraging communities to honor our, our black matriarchs in terms of this conversation more explicitly. Um, we know that they're here. So how are we honoring them? So right now we're looking at the mosaic panels that are on the front of South Side. And it's a total of 27 feet yeah. running. And they're all six foot high. Mm -hmm. And each one is a self portrait of girls and women who come to Southside, involved, engaged in programming, and... Um, I, I think it's important to note that it's in one of the most gentrified communities yes. of Ithaca, and we're like, we're still here. Yeah. We're still here. <laughs> just so y'all know, we be still here. Right. Right. Just, just, just so you know. <laughs> Let's move to the next slide and look at some of the process. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, total expression. Um, and, you know, just some of the stories that the, the journey was powerful. I think when we first met, we gathered a bunch of the girls and we had mirrors. Mm -hmm. And we had them look in the mirror for like a good, what we said, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. And I remember telling the story to someone later and the girls were like, it was like two hours. <laughs> it, was no, it was no 10 minutes, <laughs> you know. And we spent time with our, our faces, our features, our nose, our lips, and, and what stories came from just staring at ourselves and, 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 and who people saw, the family members, the ancestors, the little brothers. Um, and, and then we were, we, and then the skin, shade, we had a whole colorism exploration because this is back when they were doing the team, team dark skin, team light skin. I'm like, do y'all even know what you're talking about? Learn the history of the house Negro, field Negro concept, and they're like, what? Right? And so when you start giving them roots around some of what they're conceptualizing in their, their um, you know, social circles, um, it, it just, it's different. It's different. And so being able to process multiple layers of, of conversations that aren't embedded in our curriculum, 
right? They're just not, not in the curriculum, but giving them the tools to teach. Um, so that was, that was some of how, how it started. Do you want to tell the, the beginning story? of the self-portraiture. Yes. Yeah. We had one young lady who, when she finished her clay came out, and she was a little sad. She was a little frustrated. I think we have a picture. Uh, and um, we were, yeah, yeah. Well, so what I'll, I'll say is one thing I'll go back and say, we had fun finding and exploring our skin color. It was fun to just to do some mixing and playing around with what we see and where we see ourselves, um, what our relationship is with, with, our, with our skin color, right? And within the family, some similarities, some differences, some journeys, um, hair, texture, and really exploring the depth and loving our you know, ranges, right? Um, one, one young lady uh, actually expressed some discomfort and frustration about her lips. You know, it was a story about, you know, really just she thought they were too big. She didn't, of course, we lose our minds. We're like, what, girl, your lips are being, what, you, what? you know? And it was, we, and we all did our, you know, honoring how beautiful she is and just doing, just all of us, just go, go, go. And her father came up and he, he heard what was happening. And he looked at her and he said, girl, you got my lips. <laughs> He said, they're out here paying for these lips, <laughs> trying to get lips like ours. And everything about her shoulders, her energy, her, I mean, she just, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, daddy got this. <laughs> Dad, daddy has this. It was a really powerful and precious moment that we all got to witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to go back maybe to where we were before? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe Gemma, Gemma. So maybe the next one with Gemma. Oh, the, okay, so this was the event mm -hmm. we held. Mm -hmm. And this was a design day um, centered around drawing black joy. This was last yes. July. This is pro and this is project two. And right. this is also kind of at the heart of the pandemic. Yeah. I will say, we've been out. We've been out this whole time. In right, fact, right, right. it's wild, like folks are, a lot of people are out, a lot of people are comfortable, and it's almost making me nervous. I'm not used to this. My mother's like, but you've been out, but I'm like, nobody else was. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we were out. I mean, this is July 2020 um, that we came together to do, to do this drawing and just the incredible conversations. Many people that have um, relationships with Dejour, so we called in um, community members. He grew up in Ithaca. Um, and so really, really honoring, honoring him as a central part of the conversation, but his relationships with his students, the little girls, and, um, and then he worked with a cousin who's also in the image as well, Rasana, who's been a black girl alchemist since she was born. Um, and so this was really incredible, giving them an opportunity to just breathe out uh, their, their joy. I, it was a really beautiful day. It was. It's really And this is Gemma. This is the, the Gemma who she had a very um, a special relationship with, with Dejour. So she drew about it and tells us. And listen for her voice. It's okay. me and Mr. Dejour hugging each other. This is me and Dejour hugging each other, she says. Yeah. So she said. <laughs> we'll have captions next time, <laughs> but she's, she's an incredible little girl, um, and so she's just sharing. Yeah. This is back to the first project we yes. did, um, and so there was both working with raw clay and sculpting faces using raw clay. And then there was also a design portion which was taking commercial tiles and breaking them up, you know, hitting them with a hammer sometimes and creating a design. Um, this is Rasana on the mm -hmm. left and she's working on the portrait of her sister. Yes. Denisha mm -hmm. and, and that's Nidia. Yes, Nidia there on the right. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Oh yeah, especially when we got to grouting. Oh my goodness, we needed so much help with that. And I was, uh, luckily I was teaching a uh, freshman seminar, my Black Feminist Thought Seminar, so they all came down to help. Um, organizations from Ithaca College, Cornell, um, yeah, the students came through. So they here's definitely the sculpting did. with mm -hmm. raw clay, doing the faces, and um, there was a mixture of how do you want to have your portrait, um, you know, how do you want to start it out, how do you want to have the design, and some people, there were two girls who did um, tracing, they got their outline traced on paper, and then there were um, a few girls who did their own drawing of themselves, and then a few people also said, you draw me, right. and I'll pose, mm -hmm. and so um, there were Mia there, um, she had she had her pose. I think it was like this. Oh yeah, no, she had her hands. And, <laughs> and then um, Rosie um, did the. Um, she did herself singing. Yeah, she yeah. was holding the microphone. I mean, there was in in the the movement, the positions, what they chose was so significant. Like even the whole hands, you know, cross locked hands. Um, that's a young lady who will come sometimes and be like, I got in trouble because they said I had an attitude. We'd be like, what? Harriet Tubman had an attitude. <laughs> so Turner Tooth had an attitude, you know? We're like, what'd you do with it, you know? And, and honor your attitude. It's about how you navigate the attitude. Don't let anybody shut you down talking about you having an attitude. You say, absolutely. <laughs> I better, I hope so, keep myself strong, you know? So we, there's like stories associated with it. And I think even with the microphone, um, um, uh, several of the young, ladies really started to, um, we, we had an old Ithaca College student who stayed in Ithaca, um, lives in the neighborhood, and started offering music lessons. So there were young ladies that were learning the piano, and uh, we were like, we didn't know Rosie could sing like that. We didn't know. So some of them highlighted that coming out from the experience of learning and being able to perform and stuff like that. So that microphone was a big deal. And something I love is being able to see the progression of the work from the, the charcoal sketch to how she sculpted it. And then in the following slides, you'll get to see how it transformed when it became a mosaic. Mm -hmm. And her, her hair is swinging, you know, and you can see the movement mm -hmm. going in the tiles mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, you can't tell from the clay yet, but it's going to transform, keep going. There we go. So once the... Um, tiles were sculpted, then the, they, are, they um, dry, and then you see people glazing here. So this is from the um, most recent, this is from Second summer project. 2020, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and everybody getting together, sit down and share community, mm -hmm. sit at a table across from each other and talk as people are painting and being and creative. Food and music, as always. Um, and the dance breaks, you'll yep. see. Next slide, <laughs> please. Regular, regular Here dance breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And to follow up with that, um, this today is the beginning. Mm -hmm. Please, please, everyone who's in attendance, thank you so very much. But this is just the start. Yeah. And Elmira Infinite Canvas mm -hmm. plans to continue to work with. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. And again, we will be sharing this on our social media Yeah. And there's a base, there's a base, there's a lot of the, <laughs> I'll say there's a lot of the grunt work that we've, we've handled, right? I mean, this is, the, the other thing that's critical is this is not new. This is not a, this is not a 2020 conversation. It goes way, way back. And if I could explain to you and share with you the resistance that we have experienced, the resistance we experienced before this year, 
course, it's very, it's a different, a little bit of a different conversation this past year with everything, but like the receipts yeah. that I have with people, you know, why black girls, why this, why that, you know, and the pushback around the specificity. So what we have this is this calling that we say, and it's kind of a protective source for the girls, um, is I, I say, I shout, and I d I've been doing this for years with my class, um, but honor specificity, and they, resp and they respond unapologetically, like with an attitude, too. It's like you don't let anyone take this from you. You're, you, you allocating an opportunity to zap into you and your, your, and your people, right? And that if anything, what are we doing? We're modeling solidarity. We're modeling the power of being specific about our So because when we get into that blended minority or women of color or the, you know, then we get washed, then the specific experiences associated with our identity get washed out. And so we've spent time sort of de de defending the purpose, too much time. <laughs> I will say, um, but that's a part of my, my craft and writing and work and in media's work. And then when Anne Marie came on, and then even the language you've been using over the past couple of years, it's like we're ready. And you know, and we say, this is about black girls, this is about black women, and y'all can come too, right? And what your relationship is with black girls and black women, and what you know, and just giving people an opportunity, like the joy, giving people an opportunity to focus, but we oftentimes have to apologize for stuff that is for us, right, right, right. and so giving them the tools to, you know, to, to do that, and, and when those hooks come in, conversations, I'm like, yeah, did she just say honor specificity unapologetically? Did she just write that in the essay? Word. <laughs> then we know, so just to give you some of that, right, like right now folks are a little bit more open, more willing, or we've even <laughs> met people quote certain things. I'm like, really? But, you know, that some of that work has been done, but it still may be necessary, that there's a way in which we still have to arm and, and protect this specificity. I had a question for Anne-Marie. Sure. So, you coming into this work, Yes. like, what has it been like for you in this work with, you know, I, I want to say, AK Black Meredith too, but mm -hmm. in this space yes. with all these young That's a good women question. And, and these powerful black women mm -hmm. who are, you know, they are in it. Yes. How, what has it been like for mm -hmm. you to work it's inspiring, um, and I'm learning. I'm learning a lot, um, and I'm also, you know, I, I hold space and observe, mm -hmm. um, and I don't insert myself if I can avoid it. Um, I'm there to facilitate with materials and to assist, um, and so for me, I. You know, I feel really lucky mm -hmm. to get to be in the space and to be, um, to be getting to do this work because it's so powerful. And, and don't be shy. I will say that we have had, you know, incredible circumstances where, you know, where Anne Marie has had to interrupt differently or recognize circumstances where it's like, you know, I'm going to say something. I'm in recognizing the power of, of of your ability to speak to the specificity and there are some you know white folks watching right. and they're like oh oh that's how you you know they uh, hear it differently some folks hear it differently when it comes out of her mouth mm -hmm. oh. and that is right yes, yes, yes. and so but as as part of that we I mean, we don't play into like the nonsense associated with that concept but i reckon you know just i'm trying to think of like remember someone tried to write a little narrative about what this is. Yes. And I was impressed. You were like, absolutely not. That is not it. You're missing the entire, and I was like, go ahead, go get it. <laughs> I didn't have to say anything, and Marie handled it, you know? So there, um, I think I would add that, that that over the evolution of our experience, I've seen, yeah, this where, where, where and when you do assert yourself to interrupt some dynamics, it's been, it's been really effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Solidarity is. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're in it yes. and happy to come back and stay oh, yes. connected. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.